Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hard Night Podcast. Today is April the 3rd, uh, coming off a road trip in which we finished three and four, taking two of two of three from the pods after dropping the game today. Um, how are you feeling on a three and four road trip? Um, if you'd have told me before this road trip that we'd go three and four, I would have taken it nine times, like literally 10 out of 10. Um, yeah, I think so, too. Like, I don't think it was a perfect road trip. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get worked out. My biggest bright spot for this whole thing is the offense is still not there. And I, at least maybe some of you don't agree with this. I think their offense is going to be really good. So if you're beating really good teams, and I think the Padres, I don't know what they're going to be. I know they're at least decent. Like, they're going to be in the playoff run, I think. And the Dodgers are obviously really good. And without your number one strength being a strength, like, I think that's good signs of things to come. Um depending on how you look at it, but I think the offense is going to be okay. Well, we talked about the gauntlet <clears throat> start off going out West and to come back three and four, you're in last place. No one cares. It's April 4th, like in the center. Yeah, and they, like, and they had a good, cares. and today, like they had a really good chance to, to sweep them. Just they, they do, they kind of get that last hit to get a run across. But um, yeah, I like the way they're playing. Like their offense, they're not hitting homers, which I think they're going to be, top half of the league in homers top 10 probably so i'm not too worried about that but four um, team homers right four like they had one in la and they had three in san diego is that correct i think that's what i saw uh wilson has two who has the other one um donovan has one yeah that's it yeah so that'd be that'd be all yeah that'd be all four who's the other one who am i missing goldie goldie yeah 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 okay um first uh game one gibby looked good Yes, I'm calling him Gibby from now on. He looked, Gibby he number looked 45. Yeah, no, don't ever let anyone touch that number. Um, yeah, he looked he looked great. Um, I like I liked the way he was pitching because they gave him a lead early, which like we always talk on here about how the offense changes when the pitchers have them down early. You also pitch different when you're up early. Like you can throw more strikes, you can be more efficient. And he did that. Like he gave up two homers, but he said after the game. Yeah, but when we're up by four or five runs, I'm going to just pitch to the game. Like, if they hit a homer, they hit a homer. But we're up by five. I need to get deep into that game. And he did. He went seven. So that was really good to see. I think we were all a little nervous to see what he looked like after his spring training. So far, so good. So far, so good. Um, my apologies. Or congratulate or your welcomes to Miles Michaelis, who we did sort of call out a little bit last time. But I thought that needed to happen. Um, He was much better. He still tinkers like – He's just living, he teeters on the edge quite a bit. He, he got to. out of it, though. I agree. Oh, well, I'm just saying yeah. every night, like when you're facing a quality uh, uh, team, and here's what I'll say about the Padres. I think they're very top-heavy in that lineup. When you get past that first four, mm -hmm. like there's not a lot that scares you in that lineup yeah. outside of those first four. But when you're going to face the Braves or you're going to face the Phillies or you're going to face the Dodgers or probably you could throw in the Diamondbacks, like when you're going to face those teams – He's teetering. He's going to continue to Not teeter the on the edge. And you're, I said the Braves. I don't think so. I said the Phillies, the Braves, the Dodgers, and maybe even the Diamondbacks. Rewind it. Read the tip. I can't to the rewind. I said I the Braves. It. I said the Braves. Um, but when you are facing those teams, it's going to be hold your breath when Miles Michaels pitches, I feel like. Now, give him credit. He did what he needed to do to get out of that. He was strong. He got through it. We got a, a dub in game two. That's what you needed him to do. So can't be yeah, he looked good. Can't, can't be angry. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like, once again, I feel like our expectations for Miles Michaelis are sky high simply because of the rotation that was built. Like, if, if he was who he is and he was slated at our number four or five, we'd be more than happy with what Miles Michaelis does for us. Problem is, he's relied on to be a two. That's not on him. That's on the front office. But yeah, I thought he was good. Like, he's his problem and the thing that's infuriating is the two out, the two strike hits. It just all the time. And that's because he doesn't have a put away pitch. I do think he looked better as the game went on. The first couple innings, he didn't look very good. But yeah, I mean, if he's giving you quality starts, once again, just three runs, six innings, you're going to win a lot of those games, especially when the offense um, starts clicking. And the, to go back to put on the front ownership or the front office ownership, agreed. However, he is being paid a lot of money, not number was four supposed starter. To, was he supposed to turn it down? Um, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're going to make that kind of contract and then you're going to make comments about how you're playing checkbook teams, you better show up like you better show up that now is your time. He and did. he did. He did. That's what you didn't let me finish. But yes, he did. He, he did showed show up. up. Yeah. I mean, those are two really good starts. I thought today Zach Thompson was 
okay, I'm ready for Sonny Gray to be back. Yeah, um, it's time for Zach Thompson. Now, let me ask you something really quickly on that. Uh, you think they're just going to send him down to AAA and let him just stretch out and stay a starter down there? Or do you think he ends up in the bullpen here in St. Louis? I think he should go to AAA because I think Matthew Libertor has earned his um, bullpen spot so far. He looked really good today. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with him. He needs to get his velocity back. Like, that's what, if anything, send him to AAA and figure that out. So he gets his velocity back. So when we need him again, because we will need him in a, again, like not long from now, I wouldn't think. Knock on wood, but we will. Um, he needs to come back and be a different pitcher than he is right now. But he's going to have to make at least one more start because Sonny's stuff got thrown off by rain. So he won't be back till five Correct. days after. Like Arizona, I think they said, is the hope. I think you have to leave him as a starter down there because with this mm -hmm. rotation, um, at any moment, you're going to need somebody back up here. And I don't know who else is knocking on the door down there at AAA right now. Uh, no one. Uh, right. <laughs> no one is. That's um, I do want to say, though, as a whole, I think the pitching has been much better than I expected as a whole. Like game one and game two were so bad. Of the of the um season, not the series. But I think everyone kind of was like, oh, this pitching sucks. Since then, it's been really good. Like really good. Um, we had that John King inning, whatever. He's not a part of the long-term plan. But that's four, we've gotten five starts in a row that are pretty good. Like five and three, five innings, three on runs isn't great, but it's good enough to win a baseball game most days. So I think it's been better than I expected at this point against pretty good teams. Uh absolutely. Now let's switch over a little bit to the offense. Um mm -hmm. I think, like you said, they're still. And again, you come out of the, the gate with Glass now, Bobby Miller, Gavin Stone, Darvish, Musgrove, who you told me was terrible, pitched very well today. That's not what I said. I said he was struggling, and he was. He's on my fantasy team. Why would I say he's terrible? I'm Gave me a quality start today, too. I'm just kidding. Um, pitch well. Hey, they got to the knuckleballer. That was good to see. I, I'm. It's early, so you can't read too much into anything. You can't or, read anything into anything. Right. I agree. So I, there was a lot of people on Twitter very upset that Mason Wynn sat today for Brandon Crawford. So I want to get yeah. into this a little bit. Okay. Uh, Wynn, I think, leads the team in average at three-some-three, three, whatever he's hitting right now. Um, look, it is it is early in the year. Ollie's comments made perfect sense. Look, we're what trying to maintain – essentially, I'm paraphrasing, okay? But essentially that we're trying to maintain his workload uh, after being at a minor league level, now at a major league level. He's 22. Uh, I understand all that. But today, it, it made sense to play Brandon Croft. Today was essentially a getaway day for some I don't guys. know, it, man. He, his success against Musgrove won. But two, also, you've got to keep Mason Wynn healthy because I don't know if it was Kyle who said it, but I saw somebody's tweet. There's no one behind him outside of yeah. Brandon Crawford. That's true. So, like, if you are you can't just play him every day and wear him out and wear him down. And I'm, I think as the season goes on, you're going to – I mean, he played five of seven games. I think as the season goes on, you're going to see that him play five to six games a week. I don't think that anybody would have any problems with him playing a hundred. That's 140 games, 145 games. I don't think anybody. Yeah, but that's have baking in no that. injuries. Like most people that play 140 uh, games have one IL stint at least. But I also saw somebody today talk about well, if this was game 100, it would be okay. Well, hold on. This game is just as important as game 100. And you put Brandon Crawford in there. He's on the team for a reason. Utilize him in in a position where he can be successful. Against Joe Musgrove, who in his career he has had a lot of success against. Logically, that makes a whole lot of sense to me, and I'm not mad about it. I mean, I I'm not I'm not mad about the decision to start him. I am mad about the fact that Cosgrove was on the mound with the runner on first, a lefty, and you don't bring in Mason Wynn. That's stupid. Fair. That's stupid. That's very. Like, there's fair. nothing else you can say, but that's stupid. And then after that, there's a ground ball up the middle that Mason Wynn would have turned a double play on, got through, and they lost by one. Like, they would have won the game if Mason Wynn was in there against Cosgrove, even if they didn't score that run. That Those he was are very up. fair points. Very fair so points. It's just I was talking about the starting. I just don't – yeah, I get. I don't understand why Ali keeps, like, putting Siani into games. Like, today was different because Donovan has an injury, I think. Um, oh, no. But we'll talk about it in a second. I want to get to that in a second because the Padres pissed me off. Either way, um, what was I saying? Oh, you keep putting Siani in for Walker. I get it. 100% do that. If you're late in a game, you need to have a defensive lineup out there. One, do it. I'm okay with it. Um, but if you're willing to do that, then why is Mason Wynn not coming in? Like, he's not a massive upgrade over Brandon Crawford. Brandon Crawford does not look like a shortstop anymore. He looks, By the way, he doesn't look like he kept himself in that great of shape either. He looks a lot different than he did last year. So I, I, he's not a shortstop anymore. Like, he's our backup shortstop, but he does not look like a shortstop. If you hit a ball at him, he'd make a play. But – that's a third baseman. So I don't know. Very so. fair points. And I agree with um, all of them. 
it just to me like that was not some that's much to do about nothing right now because again it is weird though like it is weird the the part that's weird is he's the only one that sat twice that's weird has walker sat twice too i thought i saw or just once no he's only sat once okay all right um obviously the victor scott thing you're gonna put him out there every night you don't really have another center fielder to be honest with you. And you've got to see what you have with him. And to be fair, he hasn't been very good offensively. When he's been good, he's been electric. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But overall, he's hitting 120. Like, he hasn't really done anything at all offensively to merit continuation outside of the necessity in center field. Yeah, his double yesterday was cool because it was a hustle double against Tatis that no one else would have had. And then he's scoring runs. He's manufacturing runs when he gets on base, but he's not ready to be in the major leagues right now. Why does Mason Wynn keep bunting? I don't know. Don't know. But he's he's playing really well. I don't know. I don't get it. I'm tired of it. Stop. Hey, how about this? If Victor Scott is on first base, do not bunt. Let him steal the base. What the hell are we doing? You're wasting an out when he's just going to. No. Even if he's on second base, you're bunting him to third. Let him steal. He's not getting thrown out. He, he I don't get he, it. He, it took him 7.5 seconds to get the second base on a double yesterday. Has it happened three times or four already with Wynn Bunty? Three Two, maybe. I, it, uh, a lot too many yeah yeah One's I agree. Too many. It's... i'm tired of the bunting dude stop bunting you're giving away outs stop it well the 1982 no. heads would tell you okay. that it did work cool. right but yeah, put no, a wisey I... herzog team against the braves are getting killed and well, they'll so waste 15 is, outs in the process so is an ali marmal team against the braves so i don't know i'm just saying like that. no it's not it's 2024 stop don't waste outs we're smaller than that now i agree with that i do agree with that point um, it's it's odd. It's odd to see it happen so often. Michael Ciani can bunt. Nobody else. And Victor Scott, but that's only for a hit. Did you tell me that Mason Wentz doing it on his own? I think he is sometimes, yeah. Weird. I mean, some I mean, he is fast. Like if you want to get if if you can do it and do it well to get a hit, then 100 percent Like that's a way to get on base. I'm fine with that. But sack bunting is is unless it's Michael Ciani, don't do it. Stop. What do you think Mike Schilt thought? when Matt Carpenter laid down a bunt for a hit. Golly gee, I don't know. That's what he always said. After after that was all we heard for years was why isn't Matt Carpenter laying down a bunt when Mike Schultz was here to get hits when they were shifting him. I was laughing so hard when that happened. I was like, he's got to be sitting there going, oh, now you fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's exactly how what I thought happened. Like, that's okay. how I thought that went down. I, I want to get into something that happened today that made me angry. This is not – and, okay – so I get that the Padres weren't trying to hit the Cardinals. Okay, they weren't trying. Wilson got hit on the hand and almost had to get taken out of the game. Second time in this series, by the way, he got hit on the hand. Victor Scott got hit in the ribs, almost had to get taken out of the game. He's lucky he didn't fracture a rib. It was like 97 in the ribs. And then Brandon Donovan got hit on his injured elbow right after Victor Scott and had to get taken out of the game. What the hell? Well, you saw wow. it last night with the Rangers, too, if you watch that. Adoles Garcia gets hit on the wrist. That looked like ham ate bone. That looked like Jeff Bagwell broken. Was not, thank goodness. But then right after it, Josh Young gets hit, um, broken. He's out for the wrist. year. Not yeah, for the year, for months. For months. Like, I think what is, pro- I mean, this is what happens when you get young guys who throw hard. It's not like, young. It's Wandy Peralta. He's 35. Okay. Well, you know, okay, when you have guys who throw, like, you, they're not going to know where the going. Like, what's happening? Ali was screaming at Mike Schilt. Was he? Yeah, I didn't get they to were see pissed it off. I was at work, but I was. He was they, they were pissed off. Like I hope Donovan's okay. If he's hurt, they're screwed. He's like one of their two good hitters right now. Yeah, like, right. And we need to. And it was just frustrating. I hope everyone's okay because all three looked really bad. Um, Wilson was noticeably like in pain in his last at bat where he walked. So hopefully he's all right because that you don't mess with hands like that. There's so many bones in there no. that can get broken. So hopefully that Absolutely. didn't happen. Um, and being a catcher in your left hand, that's tough. So I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Herrera catch the next two games. Um, the oh, home opener, you think, huh? I mean, it's against the lefty, and I've been saying I think they're going to do that anyway with Herrera and Contreras. I think he'll DH, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if Herrera's behind the plate. I'd be shocked if both catchers are in the lineup. They were today. Oh, I missed that. Okay. I guess I didn't even, I didn't even pay any attention to that. So you think they'll do that twice? They should, I think. Even if Herrera's okay. DHing, they don't have a who's, the, who's their DH if they're not. They don't have any other righties. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Also, okay, so we need to get to some positives of this series because they did win it. Um, Wilson Contreras is awesome. He has the highest WRC plus of any player in Major League Baseball from July of last July 31st of last year on. The highest. Second highest OPS plus behind Mookie Betts. 
So he is he's been awesome for half a year and now the start of this year. Um, his batting average is low. Don't care. He had another double today. His two homers were huge. Dude, they lose those games. He doesn't hit those. Like his homer yesterday against you, Darvish. You was incredible yesterday. That's the best I've seen him since he was like in in Texas. I think like he was efficient. He was going to pitch nine innings if they didn't get to him, and he just take a hanging splitter and just destroyed it. He's betting third now, and honestly, I'm keeping him there. Like the Nolans, we have before to. the Nolans have get to. going, yeah, you keep him third. Like the Nolans are killing you right now. You're going to bat them four and five, but you got to keep Contreras in the three hole and get him as many at bats as possible. And you mentioned Wilson's defense um, per at Jacob E underscore STL. Shout out to yeah, him. I know. I was just giving him mm-hmm. his uh, his thing there. Uh, Wilson Contreras leads all catchers this season with a 54% called strike percentages on pitchers in the shadow zone. That's what you talked about last time. Like getting pitches for That's your right. starting pitcher. He looks very, very good defensively. They talked on the broadcast yesterday. Chip tried to talk. Which, by the way, could we not just let Brad do the, the the thing yesterday and give Chip a day off? Like, what are we doing here? I mean, I, I guess part of it is Brad's not a play-by-play guy, so like that's asking a lot of him. Jim Hayes went up there though and helped out, and he was good. He so did. That was fun. He did. It but was anyway, fun to listen they, to those three. They talked yesterday about the work that Wilson has put in in the off season, and so far you can it's paying dividends. Like you can yeah, see and, that. And not just that too. Apparently, his I don't want to say his pre- preparation because that. That would make me sound like I'm saying his preparation last year was bad, and I don't know that. But I do. I have heard Miles and Kyle and Lance all three talk about how they've been on the same page almost every pitch he's called. I think Miles said he shook like ten times yesterday or something. That was it. So yeah. that's great. Like they'd be on the same page. He seems to be taking strides in the right way. Here's something that's not going to be talked about much. If his framing continues to be as good as it's been, and I don't know, it probably regress a little bit. But if it's still like let's just say top twenty percent of the league, because that's where he's trending to be better than that right now. He's going to be like a top three catcher in baseball this year if he hits like he normally does. Absolutely, he is. That's like that's like he's going to be his brother like that with a little bit better offensively. People kept telling me on Twitter that he couldn't play defense, so I'm well, confused. He didn't make massive changes to get to where he's at now. Last year, he was one of the f- worst catchers in baseball at framing. I get it, but I'm saying when we signed him, like he wasn't. Well, they were not, right. He was, yeah, but I'm saying he had some decent years in Chicago. But yeah, he uh, last year he was not good defensively. Better. No, he was not. But he's been good this year. He wasn't horrible. He wasn't like unplayable the way you had to bench the guy, but he was he was not very good. Like that's true. Well, that is what he looks great. I I, that's why I said it. But um, (laughs) yeah, he looks he looks really good. He's been by far the best player on the team so far. Well, also, how nice is it to have a shortstop that plays defense the way Mason Wynn plays shortstop? Yeah, I mean him and Victor Scott up the middle. Like I get Scott with with Wilson. Right. And Nolan Gorman looks fantastic at second base, like great at second base. Yes. Um, Table that one for a second. I want to talk about that. But Mason looks – he makes every play, dude. Like he looks so good. And I think a guy with that arm and that athleticism, you assume is going to be a little wild. Like he's going to he's gonna get the balls no one else should and then airmail it. He doesn't, at least not yet. No. Like he he's very smooth. He makes every play. He looks under control. Same with Victor Scott in center field. Um, and Gorman made another great play today. Did you ever think you'd see a day where a defensive substitution would come and Gorman would be the guy coming in? No, how awesome did was not. that? It was he, that happened yesterday. He came in the yeah. second and Donnie went out to left, and they thought that was an upgrade. So I love. Hopefully, that. home cooking helps his bat a little bit. He's getting close, I think. Like yeah, and both Kyle keeps waiting this both out. Uh, we'll talk about him in a second. Um, Gorman, Gorman, I'll talk about. Um, he Kyle keeps tweeting out like when he starts hitting the ball the other way for outs, he's like just a swing away from getting hot. Last out, his, his like three of his last like five outs were liners to left field. They were correct. Outs, so yep, he's he'll come around soon. Um, I I think they need to win tomorrow. I think that's really important. Win your home opener for multiple reasons. I think it's great that after this long road trip on the West Coast, they're coming back and it's an energy filled day anyway. So they're probably gonna be able to get up for it. It's not gonna be a lull. I want to think they're gonna be ignited by the crowd. Um, but I think Friday having that off day is gonna help a lot of people out. I think so too. Um. Speaking of some guys, watching Alec Burleson hit is frustrating, dude. It really he's is. He's so talented. He's so talented. That's and what I keep hearing. No, he is. Hold on. Let me let me explain. He's so talented with his back to ball skills. They're incredible. I get he struck out today. Robert Suarez looked awesome today. Like he was he was walking people, but that man's stuff is I mean, find me real many relievers with better stuff than Robert Suarez. You can't. Either way, like the thing that's so frustrating about it is he just has no play discipline. And I'm getting kind of tired of, like, he is unlucky at times, for sure. I'm not doubting that. 
But people, are, he'll hit a 105 mile per hour ground out and they'll say, oh, well, how unlucky he hit 105. Okay, he swung at a pitch five inches below the strike zone. It's not unlucky. Don't swing at it. Right. Like if you get pitches in the strike zone to hit and then you hit those 105, they're probably going to be homers and in the gap. But you're swinging at pitches that you can only hit in the ground. So they go to the ground. Like it's not that complicated. Yeah. I want to see him do well so badly. Like I really do. Like I'm a he'll fan. Come around. I, maybe. I, I think he'll be so. at least, at the very least, he'll be a serviceable bench bat, which, once again, like that's a fourth round pick that can be a bench bat that you don't have to pay. So that's still a valuable draft pick that you got from him. He'll have his um, moments, I think. Good news. Newt was back in the lineup for Memphis last night. We uh, thought he was and playing today, center field, which did perplex all of us, but he was not. I think I'd do it. I think I'd put him in center field. Really? With his injury history? I like Victor Scott a lot, man, but he. It's so tough. Like he is facing, and and let's give him after the Miami series, which he's facing two lefties. So good God, good luck. Um, but he's facing some really, really tough pitching right now, and it's just he hasn't seen it before. And I'm not blaming him at all, but it's not an easy start to go up and face those two pitching staffs that we faced. But it it's tough, man. Like that has to be on weighing on him mentally. Like he's batting one what one twenty five, one thirty. Here's the problem, Caleb. If you do that and you put Newton center field, you're in the same predicament you're in now. Where now you got Burleson and Walker in the outfield. They don't have Burleson and Walker in the outfield. They have Donovan and Walker in the outfield. Oh, Do- that's true. Donovan and Walker in the outfield. That's I, right. I mean, bad. I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, I, I, I'm not saying they have to do it, but I do think it should be considered. For it's going to be a the, tough call. I, I mean, it's for the it's for the like long term health of your best prospect. I agree. I agree. I mean, I'm not saying no. I'm just saying that, like, I, with a guy like Newt who cannot stay healthy and has not shown the ability to stay on the field, I don't know that throwing him into center field is the way to go. And the fact that he was not indeed playing center field coming off of an injury in Memphis tells me they're not probably not going to bring him up here and throw him into center field in Bush Stadium or wherever they're going to be. I mean, they. I mean, we'll see how his next where he is the next few rehab starts. I know he's at DH tonight. I, I, I'm not saying they have to do it. I just think it's. It's just tough. Like he, he doesn't look very good. He's gotten a few hits. He's had a few really cool moments and his defense is great, but I am getting really sick and tired of hearing people that say, Oh, well he doesn't need to hit much because his defense is great. That's not how you, that's not how you, that's how you develop people, dude. Yeah. If he was 30 years old and he's Kevin Kiermaier, agree. Right. If he's, if he, that's who he's been for 10 years in the big leagues, then yeah, of course. But he's, he's 23 years old and it's his first cup of coffee in the big leagues. And he's a bat that I think, they can unlock a lot more in if they just play it a little slower. Like he is not a big strikeout guy and he's Kane twice a game right now. Like he is yeah. overmatched. I agree 100%. Um, it's going to just be an interesting to see how they handle this because we saw him send Walker back down last year. And I think that was amidst a little more uh, hullabaloo than what would happen this year. I don't think going on with people... Walker now too, by the way. Oh no. Now what? They, they pinch hit Burleson for him today in the ninth. Yeah. And they I get it. Hand... Like, Burleson's definitely a better matchup in that situation. Like, he definitely is. Um, Because Walker is just flying off of everything right now. Everything. Eduardo Perez opened my eyes to this on Sunday because I wasn't really paying that much attention to his swing. He was like, look at his front hip. It's leaking even on his takes. And it is. And he's barely, he's pounding balls into the ground. Um, or he's just not hitting them because they're throwing him sliders away. Like, Musgrove was a matchup nightmare for him today because of the – Musgrove has, like, the best slider in baseball, one of them. Um it, it's tough. Like he's got to figure it out. And he, that's one swing, like where he has a double to right center and he's got to figure it out again. Like he's one swing away. Like most of these guys are, but um, he's got to figure it out too. I just don't love the development. I understand it. Please understand me, but I don't love the way the Cardinals handle young guys at all. When being pinch hit for by Matt Carpenter and then Walker, like I get it. It's a better matchup. And like we talked about Brandon Crawford, at least a day off. I understand that a little bit more, but in mid game, I would much rather see Jordan Walker take that at bat than Alec Burleson. I'll be honest. I mean, at that point, okay, if it was like, I don't think if anybody, if nobody was on, I think he would have. Um, but in that situation, you a single ties the game. Like, you've got to go for your best option there. I don't care about development in the ninth with one that, out. That's fair. That's fair. Like, I you're, just, you're trying your hit to win baseball games. Like, you got, we've you just, lost 91 games last year. Just please understand that we've seen this in the last 15 years with guys all the way back to Colton Wall and guys, I mean, the list goes on. I don't think on. it's the same as Matheny. I don't hope not. Hope not. That's what I'm thinking. He was playing Mark Ellis. Well, Do we remember Mark that? Ellis, Dodger legend. They had a DFA, so he'd stop playing him. Yeah. Ryan Terrio back in the day. 
that was La Russa, and they won a World Series. I know, I know. Do not hate on Ryan Terrio on this. The Riot, ever. baby, the Riot. That's no, a World Series no champion. Eight. That's an LSU champion, too. Isn't bro. it so funny we had him and Nick Punto on the same team, yeah. and they were still playing yeah. Skip Schumacher at second base? <laughs> <laughs> so that's so uh, funny to me. Um, so, coming into town are the Fish. They're 0 7. Wait, before we get yeah, to that, we need to talk about Nolan. Or not. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What is up with this guy? Like, okay, he game, first game, I was like regretting what we said in our podcast. Because we were on, he had a double, he had a couple of really good swings that day. I was like, man, I really jumped the gun on this Nolan stuff. Nope. He had two opportunities today, Dad, to bring in the tying run and winning runs. Like, double plays both times. No, one double play, one strikeout. He struck yeah, out on a pitch that almost hit him in the head. Yeah, I was following along. Like, um, I don't under, he is so, and here's the thing. I don't think it's a skill issue with him right now. He is so in his own head. Like, Kyle had a funny tweet today that was like, can someone get a mic and put it in his ear or, like, a headset and say, calm the fuck down when he comes up to the plate? Because he is so antsy, and you can see it immediately. And, you know, he's getting out. Like, he's getting – he's too antsy right now. He's got to calm down. Why is no one in the dugout – calm the fuck down, dude. I don't know that he can. He's been that way forever, though, Caleb. But he's not been bad forever, Dad. He's been great. So calm down. Take a breath. Yeah. You're killing, I mean, we you're know killing he's streaky. this team right now. We know he's streaky, but not this I mean, streaky. and they you they just keep throwing him in that four spot. Like he's gotta be there. Who's gonna go up on that? No one else is. I understand. Him. I'm just saying, like, it's an out. It feels like it's an out 90% of the well, time. Well, he had an RBI right. single today, but it was a horrible he swing. Did. But the it wasn't RBI swing, single. The blue, yeah, the blue I mean, the I'll take it. If he would have done that in the last inning, we would have been tied. But right. like the only guy behind him that was hitting better than him is batting third now. Yeah, that is true. And like you're not putting Gorman ahead of him just because no, I mean, maybe maybe you should, but I I, don't think I, I assume they'll put Gorman in that five slot if they keep Willie yeah, in which, the three hole. Which is yeah, which they should keep Wilson in the three hole. He's hitting yeah. the cover off the ball right now. And also, yeah. like we we said, Goldie's been he's been awful the last two days. So, like again, Goldie does not start well. We know this. Like this is this is. Okay, I'm tired MO. of it. It's baseball. Why? I why? why don't you I start don't, well? I have no explanation. Mean? I have no explanation. Baseball Can someone explain is hard. me what that means? I don't I, care. It's, just, it's hard for the pitchers, you, too. Hold on. Do you not – you don't understand what it means? I don't know. I don't understand how every year you start bad. What is it? I, I don't understand it either. I, Why I, do I mean, all I don't of our stars a, start bad? Wilson started bad last year. I don't know. Well, Wilson last year. I mean, that's a little different. And now Gorman, who started off incredible last year, is bad now. What's happening? Well, it could just and, be, walk, and I, Walker. It, yeah, yeah. It could be How? uh it could be they are facing really good pitchers. Like that is true. Um and and we can't be like too mad. They won three games out of seven. Like it's not like and they just won a series. Like that's a really good thing. I always think it's so funny to me. Winning a series winning a series, if you win games one and three, feels so much better than if you win one and two and lose game right. three. Right. Um, yeah, because you wanted that sweep. Yeah, and it's just like and you're coming off a loss, like and it sucks. Every every loss sucks, especially when it's close like this one. But I do think they face like five of the no, six of the seven pitchers they face are really good starting pitchers. So that could be part of it as well. Agreed. Um, so before we get to the Marlins, thank you guys, everybody, for joining us, whether you're on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, or any of the other platforms out there. We greatly appreciate you. Uh, we would love if you would tell others, tell a friend, and if you hit that subscription button, greatly appreciate that. Your comments have been awesome on YouTube. Uh, I have trouble accessing comments on Spotify. I think there are some there. I just there have are. honestly no idea how to that. get to them. Yeah, yeah listen, like, if you listen to us on Spotify, by the way, please follow us because we need to get yeah. a follower count up. Yeah, I, we, we forgot <laughs> to mention that, but yeah. like, there are, we have a good amount of listeners on there. We just yeah. uh, we never tell them to follow us. Yeah, <laughs> or, go ahead. And, okay, hit the subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on Apple and Spotify. We would. I don't even know how that works. That. But yeah, me I'm neither. Sure but I'm sure it. the people who are. I listening also have no idea how do. to check our follower number. No, me neither. So, I posted. Hey, I'm like, I don't know what else. For knowing nothing. Shout out. I know the YouTube stuff. That's about it. Um, fish come in. They're zero and seven. Uh, what I hate, I, I hate that. Why can't they be one and six? I thought they're not going zero and ten. Skip, I thought we should have hired Skip Schumacher. I'm confused. He that roster is so bad. Oh, so again, it is the Johnny and Joes, not the X's and O's, like we said. Okay, I got you. I assume that was the the case, but you know, people will not know what to do right now on Twitter at all. That Skip is losing because it evidently if they, he was they the Messiah. No shot at Easter yeah. last week. He was Greek Easter's coming up this week. So he did do a great job last year, but um, if they beat two out of three, those comments will be back. I am, we didn't mention this yet. I am very happy that they won the first Mike Schilt series. Very happy. Yes, that was that. good. That was good. Um, but yeah, it's so funny that how that works out that we're playing Mike Schilt and 
um, and, yep. skip back to back. But pretty bummed yeah. that we're not going to be at the home opener. Um, we've been there the last few years. Pretty bummed about that. I did have a buddy text me two days ago and say, hey, I have an extra ticket if you want it. And I was like, man, I wish. I so wish. But I just I am not driving 10 hours or hopping on a flight for the game. But I would have loved to have gone. That would have been awesome. Yeah. If it was the first game of the season, I probably would have gone. Also, I think but it's it, going to be hella cold. It's 80 degrees here in New Orleans, so I am not looking forward we to We would have been fine. Days. But yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would have. I don't handle the cold well anymore, dude. Um, I've been down there where it was 40 degrees, so you can handle it, I think. Uh, not well. Anyway, looking for I, the festivities. First of all, let's talk really quickly. Did you all see what the Cubs <laughs> did on opening day? Not only did they put a blue L, which is hilarious because of their flag that has a blue W on it. They put two little, essentially, sparklers on there. Who came up with – I hope whoever came up with that two idea. Two of them didn't fun. work. Two of them Whoever – could you imagine coming out to that? And it was like one of those things where I was waiting for somebody to slip <laughs> and, like, tear tear something in their uh, – tear an Achilles, tear up a knee or whatever. It was like those things they put along bleachers in a basketball game. I ended up hitting one of those, separating my shoulders in a high school basketball game. I was waiting for some terrible – that looked so bad. It was awful. Like, if you ever want to see who who's the best organization in this rivalry, there you go. It's not even close, dude. Some of these other and the Dodgers close. had the the families on the field. That was weird. I don't dude, know. The about Cardinals that do it. Some it's it's the Cardinals and the Reds, and no one's close. It's the Orioles they put him in the outfield for like an hour and a half before they came out because that was the first game on TV for the, weird. Cardinals do it the best. Clyde's days are Clydesdales are the best. Reds are second best, Jordan, right? I still want to see Jordan Walker in between. The two drivers with the down major. Right now until it's a homer. He's what if it's Victor Scott this year? Can we put him there? Put Victor right there between, by the Dalmatian? I think he's under That'd be awesome. now. Right now. Um anyway, if you all are going, I'm so excited. We'd love for you to drop us a line on YouTube and let us know how it is. Everything else. We I will That'd be, be watching. I am I did see, tomorrow. I will be watching. I saw Max not gonna be there. Three. I saw big three. I saw Big Max not gonna be there this year. At least he hasn't confirmed yet. I don't know. He's been there the last three years, so maybe he just Ster- has something going on. Steroid hearing know. tomorrow in New York? or <laughs> He's innocent. Know? Innocent until proven guilty. He was never proven guilty. That is absolutely correct. Um, I'm in the Hall of Fame. Right. By the way, did you see the pictures of Adolis Garcia from just last October till it's, now? It's weird. It is weird. And here's the thing. I'm not going to say that he's on steroids because I think when you look like that, I assume you get tested way more than everybody else. Right. I would guess. Like they they pop Tatis, they'll pop anyone. Okay, if they're willing to suspend Fernando Tatis Jr., they are willing to suspend anyone for it. Correct. Um, so I'm not going to assume that that's unfair to him. The one thing I will say is, dude, you were in perfect shape last year for who you need to be as a baseball player. Why are you building up like the Rock? Do you think that he's bigger, or he went like a size down in a jersey? You know what I think it might be? It might be those jank ass jerseys. They are bad. Did you see the guy from the Yankees? Who would like just sweat all the way Rodan. through? It looked like it was going to completely disintegrate. First of all, let's talk about that before we get to the opening day. How, how, who negotiated the jersey deal? That's what I want to know. Rob Manfred, I would guess. The, no way. Somebody who works for him. There's no way the commissioner. He signed off on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he but was somebody a part else of it, negotiated. I would guess. How is it the second year in a row that the Cardinals can't get their blue jerseys till? <laughs> First of all, here's why I, I need to have the cream ones either. In February, order them from fucking DH Gate. They'll be here by uh, opening day. <laughs> order them from. You know what's funny is you could order them from Fanatics. Fanatics you would have get tomorrow. them tomorrow before they're the players are getting them. How, How does that, that make sense? Is that like this goes? This harkens me back, and I think I put out a tweet about this. Like this is like when remember the Team Canada WBC jerseys that look like somebody wrote them in crayon. No, like Great a Britain. Kid? Great Britain. That's what I said. Canada. My apologies. Great Britain. Canada ones are bad that's, too, but yeah. That's what it looks like. Like this is embarrassing for the league. It's and just let, sad because I are love you baseball doing? jerseys. Like is I, it I, Nike? I'm a, no, it's Fanatics. Nike has no, their no, 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 no. Okay. Nike has their logo on it. Fanatics is the one that makes and distributes them. Um, so I, I don't know. I I don't like it. <laughs> it makes me sad because I do think jerseys are like a big part of baseball and sports in general. Like I think the NBA's Absolutely. jerseys have gotten worse too. Um, but it just sucks. Like bring them back. Well, the NBA has 14 now. Every team has like 14 jerseys. That's the problem. Which is fine. I, I don't mind yeah, that. Marketing. I don't mind that. I like I like the motor jerseys. Like I love the Pelicans' new jerseys. By the way, are they? Why don't you see if they're winning right now? Hockey is still the, the greatest seed. jerseys, by the way. But MLB, what we got to fix it. We got to fix it. That cannot happen. So anyway, fish Pelicans come in. Lost to the Magic. I know Magic are on fire. Pels are going to be in the play-in game. They shit the bed again, dude. They're, they should. They, they should. They should destroy whoever they're playing in the play-in game. 
No, they'll play the Warriors or the Lakers and they'll lose. The Warriors, the Warriors are awful. That doesn't Just matter. Draymond Green to get him ejected in five minutes. Doesn't matter. Like th- this is a Willie Green. I, we don't have to keep going into the NBA. This is embarrassing. What's happening down they here? Play the New Suns on Sunday. Pelicans. It's going to be big. Yeah. They just lost to the Suns. They don't play him again. I think they do. Oh, at, well, I'm going Friday night to play. They play the Spurs. If we lose to the Spurs Friday night, I, I might just be done with NBA. Anyway, all right. So fish come in. Uh, weather's game one. I think on Thursday against. Who's pitching for us? Why did I just have a brain fart? Um, it is Lance Landers. Lance um, Land, as it should be. As it should be, Lance Land at home. Um, what do you expect this series? Like, obviously, we play tomorrow, then we play Saturday and Sunday. Um, I think we see Meyer on Sunday, and I do not remember who we see on Saturday. Uh, Rogers, maybe? Kevin Rogers, yeah. And then we got Gibby, and we got Miles, right? So we got our... No, not Miles. Our... Miles threw today. It'd be Gibson and... Miles didn't throw today. Miles threw, Miles... Yes, threw yesterday. It'd be Gibson. No, so it'd be Lance... Oh my gosh, who am I missing? Who are we missing? Gibby goes on Saturday. Right. Oh, Matt. Sorry. That's my Matt. Matt's on Saturday. Gibby on Sunday. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say who we're missing. So, um, yeah. the three guys that threw the best for us so far. I, right. I, I, I never want to say that they need to sweep a team because it's just like it's baseball. You lose games, right? It just happens. Obviously, the Risa Rice is incredible. Um, but I'm not too scared of someone who's just going to get, you know, five singles off you in three games. Um, so if you're the Cardinals, like, who were you afraid of in that lineup? Like legitimately. Yeah, Berger might clip you for a homer in the series. He's not going to clip you for five. Yeah, no. Jazz Chisholm probably going to hit one. He'll hit one. Who 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 else? No, the, I mean Josh Bell can hit him. Like we know that he's done it his entire career. Josh Bell is so he, oh god, he's so bad. I'm just saying, like that's a guy who can do that. He has the weirdest. He has the ugliest swing in baseball, I think. Um. So let's get to predictions. I'm going to say they go two and one. I'm not predicting a sweep. I am. Um, I I will predict two and one, and we walk out of our first ten games five and five. Which, by the way, incredibly would be incredibly happy with that. So that's where I'm yeah. at. I think they sweep them because I think, I think their offense is going to get going. Because I just I believe in this offense too much to believe it won't be it won't get going. I think Newpar whenever he's back, we don't really know when that's going to be yet, but that's going to be huge whenever that happens in the next week. I would think, but I, I just I have a hard time seeing both the Nolans continue to struggle for three more games like one of them's going to break through and you like here's the thing dad one of those guys breaks through and gets on a heater in the last seven games and they're they have five wins like that's yeah. how close they are like they just need one of those guys got even a goldie like they have so many guys that are cold right now that we know can turn on at any second and i think one or two of them will and i think they're just gonna steamroll them like, i really think this by, Marlins team's awful you get a break by not facing lazardo that's a big break um, yeah, but he wasn't very good yesterday was he it was okay. Give up three runs in like yeah, five like, and two thirds or six if innings. He's not but... doing well for you. Then, like, yeah. who do they have? That poor Skip Schumacher. Luis Arias is amazing. Like, he's you should see his stats up to this point in his career. He's like literally Tony Gwynn offensively. I, it's almost um, like I did identical defensively, night and day. Tony Gwynn was an incredible defender. But Correct. either way, offensively, Luis Arias might get three thousand hits to get in the Hall of Fame, and no one yeah. talks about it. I know. Um, but everybody else is like. So pitchable, like no one scares you. Like, yeah, you're gonna hang something to someone and they'll hit a homer. That's just baseball. It's everyone you're the Cardinals because they can hit homers right now, unless it's Wilson. But everybody else, like you their bullpen's bad. Like, you should just please beat them three times. Like, I have a hard time looking at any game, any of these three games, and saying, Yeah, the Cardinals might lose this one. Like, when did you play the Marlins in the past? It's like, okay, Sandy's throwing. Like, you're if you lose that one, right. you lose that one. Who who's their Sandy? Ryan Weathers. It could be if Nolan, you know, if Nolan Arenado doesn't get going against Ryan Weathers and Trevor Rogers, like who you have no better opportunity to get going. Those two lefties that aren't very good. Health aside, just be, I mean, just think yet yeah, this, this, uh, not health aside, but obviously you can't always count on that. But this rotation should be Sandy, Lazardo, Cabrera, Perez, Meyer. Like, yeah. And we're missing difference. all of them. That's a massive, that's a really big advantage for the Cardinals to miss all those guys. Like, right. like well, Sandy's out for the year, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think of Meyer. Like he's really talented, but he's a rookie. So we'll see what happens. This coming off Tommy John, but um, like for like Yuri's great. We're missing him. That's fortunate for us. Sucks for him. Obviously that he's not pitching. Like take advantage of facing these two lefties that you should destroy, please. Right. Um, I'm really excited, two, but I'm really excited to see what Matt's does here in St. Louis mm-hmm. coming off of that. What is probably his best start as a Cardinal. He's had probably a few 
up there. But yeah, I mean, one of them. It's his one best versus a really good team. So I would say so. Right. Yeah. His mo- I think it's the most impressed I've been with him since he's been a Cardinal. So yeah, like you're facing now a pretty bad lineup where two of the three, like their three best hitters are left-handed and the um other than Jake Berger. So that should be a really good advantage for him. So we'll see what he does. Yeah. Um, outside of that, who is your pick to click offensively? I'm not picking Arenado again because I've jinxed him. I've jinxed him twice. Um, that's a good one. I think I don't want to go Ar- Contreras. I think Nolan Gorman's facing a lefty. Yeah, who do we have? Jordan Walker. Jordan Walker is my pick. I, I I think when you face a lefty, you have to stay on the ball a little bit longer, um, and hit, that could help him from pulling off the ball, hopefully. So I think he's just – one really good swing away from getting back to where he was at the end of last season. So that's my pick. Mine's going to be Arenado. He I'm needs gonna, to get going. I'm going to pick him every series until it happens and I'm right. And he's homered in all three of his home openers. So it just here. feels like getting back to St. Louis, um, coming, getting out did of you LA. Hear what I just said? Of, I did. Getting out of Southern California. <laughs> it just feels like all of that. And then add into the fact that he's done in his last three opening days. Just feels like that's going to maybe – maybe be something for him. And also this team needs him. And he knows, he knows that I think that's got to wear on you. I don't care how damn good you are because baseball, we've talked about on here. Baseball is really hard, right? And to be great mm-hmm. at it is really, really difficult because mm-hmm. of the failure rate. You're going to fail seven out of 10 times and still be a hall. Like that's unbelievable. No other sport is that way. No other sport is that way. Except no. Maybe hockey. Maybe hockey. You shoot I, 20 times and you score two. I don't know the, the numbers there, but <laughs> I, I do want to I do want to say that phrase has really started to bother me. The fail seven times. No one that's failed seven out of 10 times is in the hall of fame. Cause that would mean they had a 300 on base percentage. So it really has started to bother me. Well, the, those 10 at bats, that doesn't count as a bat if you get walked. So you no, said seven out of 10 bother. times, not seven out of 10. Oh bats. God bless. <laughs> it does yeah. bother me. Cause I think it's, God, dumb. Why it's do not you, true. God, you sound like you have something wrong with you when you say it's things not like true. That. It's not true. Billy Bean, like Billy Bean was the starting of this on-base revolution that I'm following. Um, well, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm an on-base guy. I have been. That's why we have it in our fantasy league instead of average, because to me. So then why do you say the stupid you, thing? The stupid, the stupid, yeah. Um, what's it called? Quote? You, under, you understand it. You understand Yeah, it, I know. Correct? I'm just messing with you. But it does. I don't like it anymore. I used to like it. I'm off of it now. So, okay. Um, so you fail six out of ten times. No. Sorry. It would be like Barry Bonds. It would be like six and a half. <laughs> God, this is why this is why people come on YouTube and say comments about you like they do. This is why right here. It's true. Three fifty is a good on me. You want to know why people come at you. This is why when you say dumbass things like that. It's true. Fail six and a half times out of ten. There you go. Now I, I'm now I'm on board. <laughs> I do. I do think Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for all of you listening <laughs> and watching this right now that you just had to deal with that. <laughs> Let's get, let's get back to Nolan because I do I want to I do agree with you and we've been I don't know if we've been tough on him but I think it's been fair like he needs to play better like that's just that's just the reality yeah he plays better today we win the game like that's just how it is but I do think he I'm tired of seeing people saying he's unhappy here it's, it's he's not that's oh, not that's true. just silly I'm just tired of it because I think it also like paints him in a bad light that he's unhappy so he's playing poorly on purpose guess what guys he was unhappy in Colorado. He put up some of the best seasons we've ever seen by a third baseman. So stop. Can I say this? Anyone saying that legitimately is either A, trolling, or B, has no, literally, no idea what they're talking like, about. Has probably they, never played a sport. Like, do they think every every athlete's James Harden? Is that what they think? Or Stefan Diggs, who, by the way, got traded today. But he still played. I mean, he didn't play well last year, but he still plays mm-hmm. well most of the time. Um, um, hold on. Yeah. I wanted to say something. But I do think he cares more than anyone else on that field. Like, I genuinely believe – or. Equal to everybody else. That was a shot at twenty five guys right there. I I mean, you just watch the guy play. Like he he he. That's why he's so great. Like he is better than almost everyone else because of how much he cares. So I think it's working to his detriment, though. And I don't know what you do about it. We talked about this in the postseason both times we've been there with him. That he just gets so antsy, and he just wants to perform so much, so much that he looks like he just psychs himself out. And I I so- don't know how you get this level at playing like that, but that's just where he's at right now. Who gets the loudest ovation tomorrow during opening day? We'll never be able to tell because it all sounds the same to me, but who do you think it is? Willie McGee. Oh, okay. That's who it always is. All right. It's going to be Skip Schumacher. (laughs) Definitely not going to be Ollie. You think Mogus Pood? Oh, by some. Yeah, by some. Look, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of guys who are about 18 bush lights deep come game time. Yeah, it's going to be... 
<laughs> it could get loud from some of those people out there. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he'll get booed. like he got booed a lot at the end of last season when they were doing way no send off. I don't think it'll be like that. Like there might there'll be some, obviously there always is some, but I don't I think oh, the overwhelming majority will just be happy that baseball is back. How do you miss out on not having Adam Wainwright sing the national anthem? I can we be over that, please? Have you heard please. of the guy doing it? I've never even heard of the guy. I don't even I know his name. Him. I thought I it was Whit Merrifield, but it wasn't. I don't know. I Some country I guy. I have no idea who it is. Yeah, I, how, I don't know. How can it not be Nelly? Nelly would never do that. He would never do that. You have to pay him like $5 million. For Chuck Berry. Did Chuck Berry do it? He's dead. R.I.P. Yeah. I'm, I'm sad we're not going to be there drinking high noons in the parking lot and your mom puking. We didn't do, our picture, of the, we didn't do our picture of the series. I told I did. I said Stephen Matz. I said that's the guy. Okay. Well, did you not ask me what mine was? Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, hey guys, we will now be. I will now be taking applications for a new co-host because this one's about to get kicked off. Okay. What are you going to do? You're going you to start learning how to edit them and post them. No, I need. That's going to be on. That's got to be on the resume. <laughs> okay. That's gotta be able to do just about everything. I will show up when you need me. That's what I need. Um, um, anyway, so Stephen Matz is mine. Okay, so I won't pick Matz then. Uh, I'll go Kyle Gibson. Okay. No, 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 no. I won't. I'll go Lance Lynn on home opener on the home opener. His yeah, first I'm, ever opening start at Bush. He never got one. This is. I'm first. so excited for Lance. I love that man so much. He's gonna shove. I hope over so. on over under eight and a half strikeouts. Well, okay. What is the line? Is it up? Hold on. You. you I bet talk. it's four and a half. You think that's what it is? I was gonna look on Probably. Fanduel and see if that's up for tomorrow because yeah. I actually was thinking about that earlier. Um, on what it would be if it's over four and a half. Are you? I'm taking the over. I'm. Right? Pay, I think he gets. I think he might get ten. I think it's going to be a good game. Whoa. For Lance who, thrives, Lance Lance. who thrives in situations like that more than Lance Lynn? Nobody. I guess a bad team that strikes out a lot. Give me 10 strikeouts, Lance Lynn. Six innings, seven innings, seven innings, 10 strikeouts, one earned run. That's what he's going to give you. He's going to give up two runs in the first. <laughs> My line's going to be completely dead. Um, it does not have – I can. it's not on here yet. Yeah, so that's probably going to be. That's um, tomorrow. That's crazy. For some reason, I thought it was in two days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Lance is going to do well. I think he's going to have a good season. That's I think I I think really do think he is. He looks he looks like Lance Lynn. He's not throwing ninety seven anymore, but he's still throwing ninety four. Like yeah, it's it's not up yet on at least on Fanduel. If you it might be on a different site, but I'm not going to try and go to some of those other sites. ESPN bet is straight trash. Dude. Okay, let's not let's not trash people that might want to endorse us one day. You think ESPN bet's knocking down our door to endorse us? No, but in the event they do, let's not. Well, here's what I'll say. If they are, we can get FanDuel or DraftKings to do the same damn thing, and I'll take them because their interface is so much fucking better than ESPN bets. That's what I'll say. MGM's isn't good either. You guys can't find bets on MGM. Like, I don't even know what they're <laughs> – everybody tells me they're there, but you have to look under 18 different tabs to I know. I won, I won $300 on there, though, in the football season. Yeah, I did on both of them. I did very well turning my free bets into real money. I took my money out and ran away from that place. Dane, a lot of it. I took a lot of it. But FanDuel, FanDuel is the best. That, it's not even close. It's Draft not even close. Too. Yeah, even DraftKings. I I don't know. I they 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 have like five thousand bets a game. I can't figure everything out. So either way, sorry. But by the way, if you're oh, listening, DraftKings or FanDuel, we are available. We are only five million dollars an episode. Um, I didn't say that either. We'll do one episode and then we're out. Um, I have okay. I have one question for you that I was meant to ask earlier, but I forgot. How? Have your opinions changed, gotten better, or no, – no, that's not what I'm say. Stay the same, gotten better, or gotten worse um, from where you were after, like, the Dodgers series or before the Dodgers series, wherever you want to go with that. I'm going to say they've stayed essentially the same. I kind of want to see the 16-game run play out, and then I want to see the 35-game run play out. Those are the two things we've talked about on here a lot. Um, right now, after seven, so almost the halfway point of that 16, you're three and four. You're still under 500, and I know we said we would take that, and we would. I'm not arguing that. But you could also – you could very easily be four and three and probably should have been. They should be five and three, I think. Agreed. Well, you can't be because they've only played seven games. But Sorry, five and two. I think it should be five and two. Um, That U of I math degree up there paying off for you. I'm not not in the math degree. Um, So I'm going to say this stayed the same simply because I still do have concerns about our aging vets on the corners with the bats. I think they're going to come along. I have a little. I still have concerns on Walker and Gorman and what they truly become. I still don't know what when Nude is back and what they're going to do there. I still have concerns What's on. Happening? Well, like, are they going to play him in center field? Are they going to play him in left field? Oh, like, yeah. what is the outfield left. essentially going to look like? I, I just right now, 
I am remaining cautiously pessimistic instead of cautiously optimistic. I'm excited for what we just saw in San Diego, but I truly I mean, do not believe that the Padres are a playoff team. So does that help? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the Padres are or not. I think they, their pitching is better than it's performing, which I think is weird. Um, I'm about to sneeze. Um, I mean, it's early, dude. It's early, like it's seven games. For yeah, them, but it's, it's nine just games. Like, for them, it's well, I guess their games. last two outings were good. Yeah, they paid nine. Um, I, I think I feel better about it. And not that like I'm head over heels, like, oh, we're winning 95 games. I just think I didn't expect our pitching to look as good as it has against two good offenses. Like whether or not you like the Padres, they they shut down Machado and Tatis for the most part. Tatis hit a homer, but other than that, like they, I'm impressed with that. I'm also our defense is so much better, so much better. It's night and day. Like oh yeah, from from last year, like it's not even close. Like Nolan looks better at third. Um, Mason looks great up the middle. Victor obviously in center, and then I think I think Jordan Walker looks a ton better in right field. When you um, talk about Nor- Nolan Gorman at second base, and so. Nolan Gorman looks great, so I I do think the defense is going to help a lot, and Wilson Contreras is a big part of that. So I think if their defense was good last year, they wouldn't have been where they were. It was awful, and it helps Miles Michael Stauciani does a great job when he comes in. So I do think that that's huge, and I think the pitching is going to be better than people think. I do remember, if you remember right, I said eighty and eighty-two. That was my prediction. Right now, that's yeah. what they're on pace for. Oh, it's seven games. Yeah, they're not facing the Dodgers and Padres every game. If they if they have this, if they go on the, what's a three and four? What's that? It's like four ninety something winning percentage. Um, it's got to be close to that. I I don't know. You're the one with the math degree from U of I. Four seventy, four eighty. What is it? Look at four twenty nine. Are you sure? Eighteen eighty two is a four. Eighteen eighty two is not a four. So they're not. They're not legitimately on pace for that because that couldn't work out. But they're, they're, yeah, I, it does not. They're only two I made games that under five hundred. Either I, way, I made, they they're got, a game under five. What is wrong with you? They're three and four. <laughs> I really don't understand your math. What did you do before you came on? Did you like take six whippets before you came on the air tonight? <laughs> I'm really bad at math. I haven't done it in so long. Uh, anyway, okay, here's what I was going to say. If they go on three and four, and whatever that winning percentage is, if they do that against all the really good teams, they're going to be in a good spot, probably. That's what I was going to say. So it's far. It's exciting, but it's good. So far, two two uh, trips in. Not two trips. I don't like that. Two series in. Good Lord. Um, this is a horrible which, podcast. It's fantastic. I love it. Who is your fa- who is the team that surprised you so much in baseball right now? Good or bad? <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> who is the team that surprised you so much in baseball? I'm not sure that's how I wanted that to come out, but that's what happened. It's the Pirates, right? It has to be. Really? I think I think it's the Mets go be an Owen Owen Aren't 4. the Pirates 5 and 1? Yeah, I'm just saying I think the Mets be I, also the Tigers are undefeated. See, I went with the positives, but I think the Tigers are gonna win that division. Um, I think it's the um shout out to shout out um to Nick, my neighbor upstairs. He's a massive Detroit fan. Yeah, I think what was I saying? Oh, the Pirates. Yeah, the Pirates, I think I don't think they're gonna keep it up, but they've been surprising. I think honestly, I'd put the Brewers up there too. I didn't think they'd be five and one. Didn't they're four and one. Um oh, didn't I thought they were five and out. Didn't the uh then the Pirates, they started really well last year, remember? Like, they started really, yeah. really well last year, and we know what happened there. Um, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this series of the Marlins. I think this is where the Cardinals' talent has to take over. You can't have one of those, oh, we let them stay, let them stay in the game, and then our bullpen blew it late. Like, that just can't happen. Bullpen's been really good lately, games. too, by the way. It has been good. I agree. Housley, by the yeah. way, available for four straight days. Should be a strength of this team. We've talked about it all year. Yeah. Should be a and strength he- of this team. It's going to get even better. Nick, Rob- I mean, not Nick Robinson. Ryan Fernandez, he's alive. He looked really good today. Struck out the side in his MLB debut. Um, Imagine that. Yeah. He probably would have. He, I, I, I was texting someone and they were like, hey, it, it probably would have. Uh, they should have used Her- Fernandez against um, Muncie. I was like, yeah, he wouldn't have given up a homer to Muncie. And I was like, he definitely would have given up a homer to yeah. Muncie. Well, um, that was maybe. happening. That was inevitable, as you would say. Max Muncie was inevitable in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. All I right, anything I else? Why anything aren't you predicting a sweep? About- and then we can I just can't. I can't with this team. They almost just I, did it to a way better team than the Marlins. But, bro, you and your almost, you love an almost more than anyone I know. What do you mean? It's an baseball. Almost One bounce goes you, a different way. You win. But it didn't. So you didn't. Right. They didn't, but they will this weekend. So the bounce is going to go a different way this weekend. 
the Marlins can't. I mean, you shouldn't even be close up to the Marlins for where a bounce can affect the game. I'm going to pick two or three. We'll see who's right when we were back on the air on Sunday night. Evidently, we're going to start going live. Is this what I heard? We're going to try. We're going to. We'll see if that works. I. We're going to try. It's either our hemp if our Wi-Fi you, can hold up. You are the epitome of old dog, new trick. What do you mean? Like you can't be taught. What does that mean? Oh my! You've never I can't be heard. taught what? Like you don't want any, you don't want anything new. You want everything the status quo that goes in your life to stay the same. Because why are you saying that? I don't even think that's. I true. just feel like that's you. Because why? Because why? Because what? Everything. What made you that say you've that? Ever done the in fact your that life? I'm, okay, then you figure out how to do the streaming. Well, I would love to, but I have no clue. Nor am I going to ever do that. So that's not old dog new tricks. That's exactly what I that am means, the, actually. Well, I am one hundred percent the old dog. So why am I that? I've learned everything because you are twenty-one years old. You should already. You should be like he. You should be jumping into this. Is your future career? You should be jumping into all of my future career is podcasting with you. I mean, not with me, probably. Not anymore. You you not anymore. You just killed all our all our. To be fair, I'm probably the one who's going to get replaced in this in the long haul. If we're going to be honest, so who? Who knows? Someone famous, probably. Alan Craig. You always work with the Marlins now. Some St. Louis journalists that I don't know are like. Okay, why are you saying that now? Now we gotta <laughs> go. I'm kidding. I love them all. I was just a joke. Just a joke. I'm hoping you get a job with the Cardinals. Okay. You're the man who said if you got a job with the Cardinals, you wouldn't take it because you don't want to have to not root for them. True. If you That's get offered a job for the Cardinals, and what I get what do you a mean for call, the Cardinals? See, like this is a media literacy problem here. The Cardinals don't hire their beat writers. Okay, work covering the Cardinals. My yeah, apologies. I won't do it. You're just gonna work at the job you have now. I'm not. I'm still in college. The fuck are you talking about? You work at a golf course. Don't talk to me. Let's get. Let's get. I'm retired. My. We friend. gotta go. This is going <laughs> way too long. All right. Um. So, here we go. You got. You got the sweep with Gibby. And Walker. Nope. Oh no, Lynn. Sorry, Lynn and Walker. Well, you picked all three, so it's hard for me to figure <laughs> out which one you actually did go with. So you went. That's, Lynn that's and why Walker, we're sweeping because I believe in all three. And of them. I went Matsy and uh, Nato, and I two of three. All right. I like my I like my two much more. I think we win tomorrow. You think Nolan Arenado is going to take one full swing tomorrow, or no? He's just going to half swing. Full all time. he needs is one. I've yet to see him take one, so we'll see if that happens. Well, that's a very valid point. So, all right, let's get out of here. Let's take – hey, I'm rooting for the sweep. I'm picking two or three. But those of you going to spring or to opening day tomorrow, have an incredible time. Enjoy it. Drink extra high noons for us. Have an absolute blast. Be careful with the bush lights. Take an Uber. Be safe. Take care of everyone down there. Go Cards.